Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at blood and the components of blood and something called hematocrit. First thing is, let's go through some blood facts, all right? So, blood, what is the pH of blood? Remember, pH is the concentration of hydrogen ions, and we measure it as pH, and it's between 7.35 and 7.45. Really important. If the pH of our blood goes outside of this range, things can start to go bad. Weight, how much of our body weight is actually blood? Well, it's around about 8%. 8% of our body weight is blood. For males, we contain around about five to six liters of blood, and for females it's around about four to five liters of blood. And the temperature of blood in our body is about 38 degrees, and blood is the primary way of shifting heat around the body. If it gets too hot, then the blood vessels dilate, we release heat. If it's too cold, blood vessels constrict, we hold on to that heat. And what type of tissue is blood? Remember, there's four tissues of the body, nervous, epithelial, connective, and muscle. Blood is connective tissue. Remember, connective tissue is a whole bunch of binds and wrap structures, right? And so, bone is connective tissue, you've got cartilage is connective tissue, and you've got blood as connective tissue. And connective tissues are made up of cells, gels, and fibers. And it's the concentration of fibers and the types of gels that depend on the viscosity or hardness of that connective tissue. There's obviously few fibers in blood, and therefore, it's a liquid. So, what I've drawn up here is a tube. I've taken my blood, I've popped it in the tube, I've put this tube in a centrifuge, and I've spun that centrifuge around, and what that does is, over time, it separates out the components, the major components of blood, according to weight and size. And what we get are the biggest and heaviest things down the bottom, and we get the lightest and smallest things up the top. All right. There's three layers we need to talk about, right? One, two, three. So the first layer is the layer at the top that we're gonna focus on to begin with, and that is what we call blood plasma. And the blood plasma consists, basically, it's 55% of your entire blood volume is blood plasma. And blood plasma is made up of three main things that you should know. It's made up of water, proteins, and solutes. So of this 55%, you're gonna find that 92% of plasma is water. So if most of the blood is plasma and most of the plasma is water, most of our blood is water, all right? Proteins make up around about 7%, and you're gonna find that solutes is less than 1%. Now, with the proteins, there's three main types of proteins in blood that you should know. There's obviously more, but there's three main that you should be aware of. So these three proteins are albumin. Let's first focus on albumin, then I'll talk about the other two. So albumin is an important, most abundant protein in our blood. It does a couple of things, right? So one, it's a carrier or transport protein. And what it usually carries around are substances that are lipid soluble. So if it is lipid soluble, it doesn't like water. Most of the blood is water, so it doesn't want to be in the water, but it still needs to be transported. So it binds to albumin and lipid soluble substances, right? Lipid soluble, they can be lipid soluble drugs, for example, or they could be lipid soluble hormones. And the lipid soluble hormones include things like steroid hormones, all right? Okay, the second type of protein you should know are the globulins. And the globulins play a big role in immune function and clotting. Let's just write immune. Oh, one thing I forgot about the albumin, because I said one, there's obviously another point here for albumin, is that it is the most important protein when it comes to maintaining osmotic pressure. What's osmotic pressure? So remember, osmosis is the movement of water towards an area of high solute concentration. So if you think of a blood vessel, for example, a capillary, capillaries have holes in them, and they feed the tissues outside of that blood vessel. Here's some cells that need to be fed. 
There needs to be oxygen and nutrients, for example, that need to come out to feed those tissues. But at the same time, water comes out. So throughout the day, your capillaries are constantly leaking fluid. Now, over an entire day, if none of that fluid was reclaimed, would lose most of our blood volume for me, five to six liters worth of blood volume, just in the periphery or in the interstitium between the blood and the tissues, that's where all my fluid will go. My blood pressure will go down, wouldn't be a good situation. So I need a way of reclaiming that fluid back in. And the major way of doing this is albumin, the protein that sits in the blood, protein has a negative charge, it loves pulling water towards it, and that's called maintaining osmotic pressure. Albumin, just like globulins, right, and just like fibrinogen, which is gonna be the third protein, are all made in the liver. So if the liver isn't doing too well, you may not produce enough albumin, you may not maintain osmotic pressure, and fluid may remain leaked out, and this is edema, all right? So really important clinical link there. So we said globulins are important with immune function, but they're also important in clotting. And then the third protein is fibrinogen. And fibrinogen is an inactive protein that needs to be activated into fibrin, right? And it's involved in clotting as well, in the clotting cascade. Perfect. All right, what about solutes? What type of solutes do we have? Well, the solutes are gonna be things like ions. And ions are sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, chloride, things like that. Nutrients. These nutrients may be glucose or amino acids or fatty acids, for example. Gases, gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide and nitrogen, and waste, like uric acid or ammonia, for example, waste. Metabolic waste is what we're referring to. So you're gonna find that plasma makes up the most of our entire blood, 55% water protein solutes, and these are the components of that. Next part, is this part here. So this part here is the smallest component of our blood called the buffy coat. It is this white buffy layer, if you put it in a centrifuge. It makes up less than 1% of the entire blood volume. And it is made up of leukocytes and thrombocytes, which are white blood cells and platelets. So leukocytes, let's do leukocytes first. All right, so for the leukocytes, there's around about 10,000 cells per mil. Right? And leukocytes, like I said, are also known as white blood cells. Leuco means white, right? Cyte means cell. Five different types of leukocytes. Remember the mnemonic, never let monkeys eat bananas. Never let monkeys eat bananas. There's your mnemonic. Neutrophils. Lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, basophils, and it also goes in abundance, most abundant to least abundant. So most of our white blood cells are neutrophils, really important in, what's it called when you get damaged vascularized tissue? Inflammation. All right, so, that's leukocytes. The other one was thrombocytes, which are platelets. They're more cell fragments than cells themselves from megakaryocytes. But like I said, platelets. And you have around about 300,000 cells per mil, right? So there's more platelets in number than there are white blood cells. And platelets play a really important role in clotting. So these leukocytes, white blood cells, are there for immune function, right? So you've got T, B cells, and all these other cells that have um, really important nuclei as well. So we'll talk about that in a future video. And platelets which are involved in the clotting cascade. All right, the last one down the bottom is eosinophils. Uh, sorry, is erythrocytes. What am I talking about? Erythrocytes, which means red cells, leukocytes, white cells, erythrocytes, red cells. So they're the RBCs, red blood cells, and we have around about five million per mil, one of the most abundant cells in the entire body. And what they do is they carry gases, 
right? They carry oxygen, carbon dioxide, really important. Red blood cells are filled with hemoglobin that carry oxygen. Okay, so when we take blood and we spin it down and we measure this, the percentage of this for males is around about 44%. For women, the red blood cell percentage is around about 40%. And this is also called our hematocrit, right? So measuring hematocrit is simply measuring the red blood cell percentage of whole blood. Males around about 44%, females around about 40%, plus or minus a number of percentage. Now here's the thing. The reason why we do this is if it goes too low, it may be an indication of anemia. Not enough red blood cells. If it goes too high, maybe an indication of polycythemia. And these will be the topics of future videos. So, as we look at the hematocrit or blood components, three major types, plasma, 55%, buffy coat, less than 1%, and erythrocytes, around about 44%. So hopefully that helps looking at blood components.